Gina, tell me about your past and what makes you able to speak so passionately about this opiate use. Because one time, about three years ago, I was also an opiate user. But what I found out is that as I woke up every morning, my body was hurting more than the pain that was already in there from the procedure that I had I'm done. It was coming from the pills and I knew that. What did I do? I stopped using when I came up off of it. What was your what was your fuel to make you stop using? How did you get off of the drugs? I I, I prayed one, because God is the source of the strength in my life and I know what he has done for me. Um I prayed and I asked them to take this take this yearning away from me so that I would not have to be codependent on their substance. And then when I looked at the people out on the street, they gave me more hope and strength than a than a seed in the ground that you can't even see that's going to blossom into a flower. Back to those plants, those seeds, those flowers, they're killing our people. And Does I this see happen this. to, you say our people, is it only this color? Oh, or absolutely it not. To oh, it, oh, absolutely no, not. It's not, just, it's not just how this thing don't have no race, name. have no color, don't have name. no name, no age, no agenda. Okay. It's affecting all people. So it's happening to our mankind. Our mankind. Yeah, Thank you so much. We're gonna go to uh, one. Oh, real, real quick. You know what's you know what's really interesting is that at the at the clinic up in the east east side, mm -hmm. is that the only thing hustling and bustling. It's not industry. Mm -hmm. It's not jobs. It's mm -hmm. the damn clinic. It's the yeah. clinic. Right. That's right. Yeah. He's yeah. Yeah. Feels bad. He's clinic. He's a doctor. Doctor. She's on fame management right, right now. Business. So we're gonna get mm -hmm. to you. And Wanda, so. Tell us your story. Do yes, you think do you think Baltimore and maybe not even just Baltimore, but do you think everyone in America is experiencing a crisis when it comes to opioid? Is it affecting everyone? Yes, yes it is. And it's affecting the ones that's prescribed it and it's affecting the ones that that that's not getting them. Uh, prescription form, mm -hmm. but even if you're not getting them, say for instance, me for the first time getting them, I can go to this parking lot. It's a supermarket, and I can go up to this certain car and give this man $350 and actually buy that strip. But for me, I ain't got to do that because I'm in pain management as I speak. Okay. And I take them, but I don't take them as prescribed because it seems like the way the doctor is trying to get us to take them, mm -hmm. is it becomes addictive. addictive. So I find my own method. I have arthritis throughout my body. There's no cure for that among tall ligaments and nerve damage. So, yes, I take them to relieve my pain, but not as prescribed. But the way they want me to take them, if I take them like that, yeah, I'll be one of them running around here like a chicken with my head cut off. But thank God that I ain't got to do it like that. I want you to tell us about... What's, what this is doing, what the opioid crisis is doing to our youth. Is it good for our youth or is it bad? It's bad. You got these kids out here that's taking them. They, they disrespecting their parents. They out here disrespecting their parents. They, they robbing their own people for it. They, they, they knock on people's doors and run up in people's houses just for, for this stuff. It's, it, it's terrible. It's killing our young African American. African -American. Males. And do you think do you think that's why we see this almost record number of homicides this yes. year? Mm -hmm. Is because yes. of the opioid crisis? It has crisis? a lot to do with it. That's exactly where it comes it from. It has a lot to exactly. do with it. Exactly. Every and it's court. crazy because Trump, he's sitting there wanting to fight with these people across seas and try and start a nuclear war. When he I should put a, a crisis a on these opiates. Well, he, he, actually it's it's like yeah. he actually just said that. It's like that. He actually just said that. But you're right. He, but you're right. It is. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it how took him all this time, though. Yeah. Look how many people die from Decades. It. Even babies. Yeah. Babies getting a hold of this stuff. A young lady came in our church this morning, prime example, and she had an infant. And just so happened this infant was a born a preemie. And, and the mom was an opiate addict. This baby was so small, mm. my God. Didn't he have a chance, a, a, a Caucasian baby, beautiful baby. She's a foster care provider which adopts children and nurtures them into healthier children and give them a fresh start, a new start. And when she brought that baby in there, the baby looked like, mm. so, looked like so a so doll baby. It was so small was so and the baby small. was born two weeks ago. It but so it's sad. just sad because well, one pound, when they was doing that, that thing ceased to fire, I just thought that that one weekend that we was going to make it because they made it to the, and within to 40 something hours. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, wow, that fast. But the way it is out here today, mostly 
uh, nine out of ten of our young boys are on these opiate prescription drugs. If they're not on on the Percocets and the Oxycontin, they on the liquor, they on the marijuana, and they, and they love the Xanax bars. They love the Xanax bars Molly's because the Xanax and Molly's they take everything. Oh, and they take crushing oh, the lean. You know what yeah. lean is? And fitting on. You know what lean is? You know what lean, lean put in is? Butt. It's a tra it's a it's they a tranquilizer it that is used to settle horses down. They lay thousand pound horses down. Yeah. That's what they treat an uh, ill horse with. With that lean, and they drinking it to get high off of. Hmm. I've seen them. There's a limited few who are keeping. Uh, the inner cities in this perpetual state of dependence yeah. and uh, oppression so they can profit. And you can see it, you know, it's very interesting. We we were uh, speaking earlier, and I don't know if you probably don't know this, but one third of blacks in Baltimore have a net worth of zero. Of course. Of zero. Of course. I can believe that. I can believe that. Of zero. There's 46,800 vacant row homes here in Baltimore. The medium wealth income uh, is uh, is double of a white family here in town. Meanwhile, the medium wealth income of an African American family is about thirty something thousand. Um, of a of a white family, it's about sixty to seventy. So it's always doubled. And it's it's very interesting that we see these statistics that are proving that there has been oppression and there continues to be oppression, and a lot of that uh, has to deal with drugs and opioids. You think about it, think about it. Every day, every day we turn on the news, what do we see? We see another black young, thing young in the street. man dies under yeah. the age of 25 years old. No. So the opioid <laughs> crisis, I mean, it's, it's called a crisis, but should we call it a war? It is it's a, war. A, war. It's a war. It's a war. And it's affecting our youth, and it's affecting everything in our country. Yes. And it's, it's a, a war. war. Yeah. Yes, it's a war. It is a war. We should start treating it like a war. Absolutely. Yes. yes.